No, it's not about making bread. Your camera A is making bread? Basically. That's on video now. <laughs> nice. That was Jeffrey. He's big in bread. Uh, quick recap. This is Boar's Journey to 13.6 EVs. I'm going to put EV in the title too. So this is electron volts. Uh, that is the ionization energy of hydrogen, which people had seen based on uh, emission spectrum and things. And so Bohr was thinking of the electron as an orbiting mass. And he starts first with energy. And he says, okay, total energy is kinetic energy plus potential. This is electrostatic potential energy. We have to keep the negative because this is an, it's an attraction, so it's a negative potential energy that has to be there. Half mv squared. Um, change these to this. E is the elementary charge, so because proton and electron have the same charge. And we can kind of work that down to here, but in order to change this to this, got to look at force first. So if you look at the force of that electron, it's a centripetal force provided by electrostatic force. So kqq over r squared is equal to mv squared over r, that's the centripetal part. And you end up with this guy, which is important later, and also lets us take this ke squared over r and substitute it in for mv squared. And then we can kind of carry on. Because we don't like velocities. Velocity is really hard to find on an electron. So we have then this, and so our total energy, totes, is negative one half ke squared over r. And this is where we're gonna go in a second here. You remember that. Uh, he then says we need more stuff to help us, so we use angular momentum. Angular momentum is moment of inertia times omega. So for an orbiting body, which you'll learn later, I is mr squared and omega is v over r. And we put those in for our angular momentum. This is I and this is omega. And we get mvr. And then it goes, bam. Let's do something crazy. And let's quantum this. And he says, let's just make it nh over two pi, because H is Planck's constant, and that's quantum, and the universe is quantum, so maybe it'll work. And two pi is circles, and N is the energy level of the atom. And so if we work through that, he, he just decides to square both sides, because he's trying to get to mv squared, because we know what mv squared is. So if we square all that and work through it, we get this is equal to mv squared, and because from before, we knew that mv squared is equal to ke squared over r. Uh, we end up with this. And then we cancel out the r's, and if we just solve this all for r, we get a formula for the radius. So this is an electron radius. It's dependent on n, which is the energy level. But it's fixed and finite. Everything else in here is constant. So an electron can only exist at these specific radii and not in between. So this is what leads to Bohr models, right? You gotta draw Bohr models in, in chem, and this is why. <laughs> okay, so we know R. Now let's go back to energy. The energy formula was, what was it, negative one half Ke squared over R? Have I got that right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, and now we know what R is, right? So it's gonna be messy. We have to put this all in, and we have to flip it upside down. So this is kind of like, just again, for the sake of clarity, we're gonna go, this is negative one half Ke squared uh, times one over R. So this is negative one half Ke squared times all of this, but flipped upside down. So 
just going to write it all in there. So 4 pi squared k e squared m over n squared h squared. And if you put that all together, you get Let's, let's ditch the 2 on the bottom, and we'll make the 4 into 2 on top. And you'll have negative 2 pi squared k squared e to the 4th m all over n squared. Did I get everything? No. I think so. Wait, why? Sorry, I have a question. Why did you float them in the beginning? Uh, because the R here is on the bottom. Oh, okay. So you're, when you divide by this, you just flip it all over and multiply it. Okay, now this is interesting. Um, you can also say, you could, you could kind of say it like this. Everything is constant in here. So the energy of that electron is only dependent on n squared. Okay, pick up your calculator, put it all in. See what you get. I'll do it too. I'll believe 13. You don't have to put in n. N stays there. Because n is the orbital level. It's the energy level. Well, we're going to hope. So k is 8.99 times 10 to the 9. That has to be squared. And multiply. Uh, so the charge of the electron is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19, and you gotta put that to the fourth. Wait, M has to go to the fourth. No, the charge has to go to the fourth. Oh. And I'm just gonna hit equals there, and then I'm gonna times by the mass of the electron, which is 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. And I'm press equals there. And then you wanna divide by uh, Planck's constant, which is 6.63 to the negative 34, and you have to square it. Yeah, that's okay. This is in joules. So the answer to this is equal to about 2.17 times 10 to the negative 18 joules. And then you have to divide by the number of joules in an EV, which is? Yeah, so you divide that by 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. Oh. And you get, I actually got 13.5. <laughs> but if you put in all the proper uh, constants to the right decimals, you will get negative 13.6. Does that just when n equals one? Say it again. Does that just when n equals one? When n equals one, that is exactly right. Yes. So what does it mean when n equals one? It's in the ground state. That's right. You're in the ground state. This is the lowest energy level you can be, the electron can be, negative 13.6. Now what if I throw in a photon that's more than 13.6 EVs? 
it's gone, right? And you're going to get some electron, some current in your photoelectric effect, right? Okay, what if that electron pops up to the very top, the outside as far as it can go, but then it gets pulled back in? Releases like Good. Photons. Then it will release a photon with 13.6 EGs. Sorry? Interesting. With that much. Exactly, with that much energy. And so this is what you get when you do the photoelectron effect, the, the photoelectric effect. You get that, that work function, if you calculate it out, is equal to 13.6 EVs. So you'll, you're getting the extra energy in your voltage, like if it's a photon that's 28 EVs or whatever, you get the difference in your kinetic energy. And when you take the graph down, it goes down to negative 13.6. And so all the electrons that are getting pushed out, they all took 13.6 EVs to get pushed out. Okay, so tell me now the electron volts of the second orbital. <laughs> you can do it in EVs, it's really simple. Three point three nine. Yeah, so it's 13.6 divided by 4, right? So energy levels of an orbital. Maybe I should write this down a little bit. Which makes sense because it's what? It's further away. Yeah, it's further away. Um, so. And N is the energy level. Oops. Okay. Uh, how much time do we have? I should know this. When is it? When is this possible? I'm like, where's my phone? It's videoing the thing. Uh, you can find out the frequency of light that should be released by an electron dropping from one level to the next. Yes? So you guys found out that... I'm just gonna turn this off. You guys found out that the ground state... So if this is, if this is hydrogen, you know, the ground state, that's 13.6, right? And this is n equals 1. At n equals 2, which is pretty high above, we said negative 3 point, negative 3.39. And these are all in EVs. Okay, so how much energy would a photon be if an electron drops from n equals 2 down to n equals 1? Minus. Yeah, it's just this minus this, right? The difference in energy has to go to a photon. Okay, so what's the energy of a photon? We learned it last day. Pretty simple formula. HF, good job, Ben. So if you take this energy, turn it back into joules, and divide by H, you can get the frequency released, okay? Is there gonna be like an infinite number of photons that are able to be released? No, because it's discrete levels. That's right. There's only certain ones, right? Now what you'll find is that if you do this calculation and you calculate this frequency, it won't be in the visible range. We won't, we won't be able to see it. Okay. But if you go from n equals 3, if you calculate this one, can someone do that quickly for me? I'll do it too. 
you just go 13.6 divided by 3 squared, which is 9. So you're going to get about 1.51. Okay. Uh, calculate for me, if you would, this energy here. So that's going to be 3.39 minus 1.51. So this drop is equal to 1.88 EVs, yes? Okay, what does that equal in joules? We have to times it by 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. And you get about 3.0 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. Okay. Divide that. This is the energy of the photon that would be released. So divide that by H. And that's going to equal, uh, or not equal, but it produces a frequency of 4.5 times 10 to the 14. And we would turn that into a wavelength. Speed of light. Yeah, speed of light divided by frequency. So x to the minus 1, that answer. And then multiply by 2.99 times 10 to the 8. And you get about 6.6 .6 times 10 to the 7. Ah, sorry, negative 7 which is 660 nanometers. What color is that? Orange? Other, other end. Oh, no, it's longer, isn't it? Pretty, pretty close to red, right? Reddish. You want to see it? Sure. Okay, I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to turn the video off, though. I thought you were just going to hold up the red item for a second. No, no, I'm going to show it to you with okay. photo, photo, photon emission. Let's do it. I have